Hello my dudes and welcome back to the beginning of a new reading vlog. It's now the second week of The Owls and I'm yet to finish a book for The Owls but it's fine. I'm currently reading two books, one of them being A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm 150 pages in. It's a YA mystery thriller about a character called Pip who wants to look into a unsolved murder case for her school project. It's fun, I'm interested but I'm gonna hold off on reading this um, for a few days at least because this probably will win the poll over for the buddy read so I don't want to finish it all before anybody else you know I'm supposed to be buddy reading it so I'm gonna set that aside for now but I have been listening to the audiobook for My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell and this oh it's making me feel uncomfortable but like it's meant to it's it's really good so far. I like the way it's being told in the two time frames. We have our main character Vanessa who is in her 30s looking back on the relationship she had with her English teacher when she was 15. So you know quite a hard topic to read about. Also we have a lot of flashbacks to her when she's 15 starting this relationship with him and the way that this man grooms her and gets her on side and makes her feel special and makes her idolise it. Oh it's, it's really messed up but compelling. So I'll be continuing to read this. I don't quite know what else I'm going to pick up after that. Maybe Sandman? But it's Monday night now. I'm going to be editing. So if I read anything, I will just update y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Possibly Wednesday. We'll see. <laughs> Friday my love so it's Easter weekend I haven't really updated you much because I've hardly done any reading this week just been watching a lot of Parks and Rec and we did have D&D last night though we played that for a few hours so that was fun I have made some more progress into this I've actually started tabbing it which I never do but I thought it could be a good representation of my feelings so I'm on page 266 so I have about 100 pages left and oof all of the blue tabs in here are the times when I felt just so desperately uncomfortable whilst reading this. The light green ones are quotes that I want to look back on and then I have a couple of red ones there for oh my god I love this moments. I'm expecting there to be a lot more red tabs towards the end of this book because wow this is so well done but I have been reading this so slowly because there's been so many like yikes moments where I've just had to set this aside and just like look at cat videos for a little bit just to remind myself that there is some good in the world. Also I felt so frustrated for a lot of this because of all the gaslighting but I'll save my thoughts till the end because I'm sure I'll have um, a lot to say about it. So we're already over a week into the owls and I still haven't finished a book so I'm hoping to finish this one out today. And then I'm gonna pick up The Sandman by Neil Gaiman just so I can feel like I've got some momentum and maybe get two books finished today. This is the first in a comic series, apologies, I said graphic novel in my Wheel of TBR because I never really knew the difference. I think I know the difference now, so this is a comic. And I have been warned that this is very confusing and that I probably won't have a clue just by reading the first one. I'll need to continue on in the series. Massey's naked again. This isn't OnlyFans. Put some clothes on. Why are you always naked? When we going out? We're going out soon. Okay. We're gonna go for a wee walk just to the park and um, we went the other day as well So we're going out for our allotted exercise time But then when I get back I will be reading these two and then for the rest of the weekend I'm not sure I'm kind of feel like I should probably pick something up That's a little bit lighter before I move on to some of the other darker books such as Battle Royale and Kill Creek So I might start my reread of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban or I might pick up Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson because I feel like I'm just gonna really enjoy this. I didn't know but the superheroes in here, or the people who have superpowers, are actually evil. Like, someone told me that, and I'm just really, like, more excited for it now. <laughs> I have been told it's not his best, like, I'm not going to be comparing it to Stormlight or anything, but it could be really fun, and I might need some fun after this. <laughs> I think that's maybe why I wanted to be watching Parks and Rec a lot this week as well, because that's so wholesome, and my dark Vanessa is not wholesome. <laughs> oh, also, you may have noticed that I put this fake ivy plant here. I've had this for a while. <laughs> And I've been meaning to um, add these on the shelf somewhere. I've put another one up there and that's not how it's going to look. I, I don't know. I just want to be Ashley, okay? A folly through fiction. <laughs> Has it worked? Nah, I'll never reach that level of, uh, you know, forest fairy. But <laughs> I kind of want to get some more plants. But I don't have a very good track record with them. Like, I had some succulents and then they all died from neglect. So, 
fake plants are probably the way forward for me. Like this one's fake as well. I'm also thinking this weekend of switching up these shelves. I have never attempted like a full on rainbow. Don't even think I was in focus then, but yeah, I want to kind of give it a go over these two shelves just because I just want to play about and see how it looks. It may just look crap and I'm going to have to put it back, but I do need to sort these out a little bit. So I might play about with these tomorrow um, because I'd like to listen to an audiobook whilst I do that. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not having a good time with the My Dark Vanessa audiobook. Don't get me wrong, it's great. It's just, it's always oh, rough. <laughs> Hi, hello, how are you? I read two books, finally. I'm making some progress with the owls. So I continued tapping this one. I didn't tap the beginning because that's the part I listened to via audiobook, but wow, this is probably the hardest book I've ever read or the one that's made me feel the most uncomfortable, definitely. As evidenced by all these blue tabs, this was so well executed. I gave it four stars and then I've actually upped that on Goodreads to a five star because I can't stop thinking about this since I finished it the other night. It's definitely going to stick with me. It was just so unflinching, all of the complex emotions that Vanessa feels for this man. I'd say I found it harder to get through the past perspective of Vanessa when she's 15 because, oof, at the beginning, um, it very much does feel like a romance. It doesn't feel like that way for long. The author does a very good job of letting you know that this is not okay, mostly through Vanessa being so self-aware in this. A lot of the time she does question the behavior but she will always make excuses for it and she'll always find a way to justify it because she is in love with this man so deeply and her whole identity is now rooted in him so the past perspective was definitely difficult to get through but then you have the present as well where it's just as hard to read because you can see the effect that this trauma has had on Vanessa's life now and the way that she will hear about these other people coming forward to press charges against him but she will find excuses again being like they're exaggerating he couldn't possibly have had a relationship with them the way that he did with me because i'm special and she flat out refuses to see herself as a victim because this relationship means everything to her it's her whole life at the beginning we as readers we identify the gaslighting and all the manipulative behavior but obviously vanessa being 15 being in love with this man she doesn't necessarily see it at first and he's very clever with it as well the way that he makes her feel like she has all the power in this relationship because if she was to say anything Thing, it would ruin him. He is on her, his knees in front of her at her mercy but as a reader you can tell that she doesn't actually have any power and she's just been manipulated. As you can imagine it does touch upon the Me Too movement as well which I like to see. I really liked how this wrapped up. I appreciated the ending and it surprised me as well. Um, at around like my first red tab, <laughs> page 189, this just takes a different turn, the tone changes, it got easier to read from then on. Honestly, I could rant about this book for so long, this would be such a good book to read with somebody, like buddy reader or for a book club. It's so well done, so thought-provoking, a very powerful read. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody because, oh my god, trigger warnings. A lot of scenes did make me cringe, like I said, I had to keep put setting this aside. And it might not be the best uh, recommendation for, you know, the current times because a lot of us just want to read happy escapism books but if you feel like you can handle this I highly highly recommend it but I honestly can't think of a way that this could have been better done not that I've read a lot of books like this that you know feature on this such a sensitive topic but wow I'm not gonna be able to not think about this one for a while it's gonna stick with me definitely and yeah I gave it five stars if you can handle this highly like i said highly recommend and i think that this could possibly end up on my best books of uh, 2020 list too and what did i read this one for it was for arithmancy arithmancy is done and then i read the first volume of the sandman by neil gaiman and various artists etc for astronomy well for the astronomy prompt because that's to read a book when it's dark outside so i read this last night no, the night before. <laughs> Didn't take me too long. It's a very funky art style. It took me a second to kind of get my, well, get to grips with how it's set out. And it took me even longer to really get my head around the story. But this one is about the King of Dreams. It's very fantastical. It definitely gave me like, it's kind of an obvious one, but a good omens vibe because obviously that's by Neil Gaiman as well. And it felt like that kind of nonsensical, 
satirical. This is definitely darker though. This felt a little bit morbid in places. Again, trigger warnings for this. It's, um, yeah, there's some trickier scenes for sure that felt more like horror. But at the beginning, we have a group of people in this kind of secret society that are trying to capture death, but instead they end up summoning the King of Dreams, who is Death's brother, and they just keep him locked up for hundreds of years. This affects some people's sleep, which you do see the ramifications of that. And uh, yeah, eventually, as you can imagine, the King of Dreams is let loose and he has to go and find some objects or some of his possessions that hold some power. Um, yeah, it was really weird at first. I didn't know what the hell was happening until I'd say the latter third of this because you do have a lot of scenes that are dreams or nightmares. I didn't expect for superheroes to show up in here or the fates. Um, and I'm imagining throughout the rest of the series there's lots where it'll draw on from loads of different types of mythology and just pop culture, but it was really funny and I like the King of Dreams character and the ending has me really, really interested in carrying on in the series. I gave it four stars. I expected it to be more of a free start at the beginning because I wasn't really feeling it. But by the end, I can really appreciate this. I really like Neil. I shouldn't have been too surprised because I really like Neil Gaiman. But I was forewarned before starting this that it might not be for me because it's kind of all over the place. But I liked it for that. I liked the chaos. And I feel like it can only make more sense from here. Maybe not. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Do let me know. But I will definitely be continuing on in this series. Like I said, four star. If you like good omens and books like Hitchhikers, for example, that kind of writing, I think you'd like this. This, this was actually really fun. But dark, like dark fun. I don't know. And then I also yesterday started Steelheart. I'm not doing too bad with it actually. I've read quite a lot. I'm already over halfway. I'm on part three. I'm reading this for Ancient Runes, which is the heart rune prompt. And as I said before, it's about super villains, which I really like. Um, yeah, the writing is, is not great. It's all right, it's just not great. It seems a little bit stumbly and there's been times when um, like Sanderson's given, given us the same information like two or three times and it's like, yeah, we already know this. So I don't know, maybe it's because I think this is YA and maybe he felt like he had to, I'm not sure. Basically his books are better now, but I do still like this, it's a lot of fun. Um, we start off with a character who's eight, year, eight years old. He's called David. He's at a bank with his father. His father's trying to get a bank loan. I'm gonna have to move because I've got a dead leg, so I'm gonna switch around. Just gonna recline back on the fainting couch until uh, the feeling returns in my leg. But we have David, who's eight years old at the beginning of this, of this book. He's in this bank and the bank is attacked by something called an epic, which is a person who has superpowers. Only for a, another epic to come into the bank called Steelheart, who's absolutely huge, completely impenetrable, like nothing can take him down. And David and his dad think, yay, we're about to be rescued. You know, we have a superhero here to save us. Only for this character Steelheart to be like, no, I'm in charge. I'm all powerful and I'm going to take over the city basically. So it seems like, yeah, power does corrupt in here. Like all of the epics turn out to be not very nice people. At the end of the first chapter, I don't think it's a spoiler, we unfortunately have David's dad being killed by Steelheart and that leads David David onto, you know, a life of, that's his whole life's mission now. He's gonna, he's out for revenge against Steelheart because he thinks that he might not be so impenetrable. So he's going to do whatever he needs to do to take Steelheart down. Then we flash forward to when he's 18, so 10 years in the future. And for the last 10 years, he's been working on his plan. He wants to join a, a group of people called the Reckoners who take these epics down, go out and kill kill them, hunt them, and that's where the plot kicks off. He's going to try and find the Reckoners. Um, it is pretty cool, just like all of Sanderson's books, like the kind of world building, as we find out that these humans didn't start getting super powers until something arrived in the sky, like I think it's a comet or something called Calamity. And I like all of the different types of superpowers. They're very inventive. There's some nice rules, as you'd expect with Sanderson, where in every epic will have a different type of weakness. So it's, it is cool, it's fun, it's really fast paced. Some of the dialogue is a little bit cheesy though, like I don't like how our main character, well our protagonist, is interacting with a female character very much. Maybe I'm just being a little bit nitpicky with it, but it is a lot of fun, I am enjoying it. I really enjoyed Renegades by Marissa Mayer and it feels like, you know, it's a similar thing. 
and I, I know he's going to have something cool happening in the ending. I have an idea of what it could be, which I might as well just share with you. It seems like it's going to be one of those books where we're following a character who doesn't have any superhuman abilities. And then by the end, oh, wait, he's the most powerful superhuman ever. He just we just didn't know it yet, <laughs> you know, and if it does go that way, I'm not going to be too mad at it. I like that, you know, the chosen one trope for a reason, but maybe not. Sanderson does have uh, a way of surprising me by the end of his book, so no doubt this is going to be an action-packed, uh, on the edge of my seat kind of ending. So I'm actually going to pick up the audiobook, I think, because it's on script. Oh, also, I don't know if anyone cares, but there's a character in here called Cody. Like, it's a male character who's um, Scottish, but not really. So immediately I had to stand. <laughs> I've never read a book where a character has had the same name as me, so it's a bit of a strange experience for me. It's spelled differently, though. Anyway, no one cares. I'm going to listen to some of the... Well, I'm going to listen to the audiobook of this. Whilst I do some things to my shelves, I really want to, like I said change things around a little bit. As I said, I do want to attempt some kind of rainbow, but I'm worried I don't have enough books that have like a yellow, orange or pink spine, so it might not work. And I don't want to have to dip into, well, I'm just not going to dip into my unread TBR books because then that would just be a nightmare for my, you know, wheel of TBR every month. But first things first, I need to take all of these books off these shelves, give it a wee clean, and then I'm going to sort by, well, I'm going to put some piles of books via colour to see if it's even possible. <laughs> Shelves have all been cleared. Now to see if I can do this. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, so I've just collected together the books that have red, orange, yellow, and pink spines. I think I might be able to pull this off. I didn't think I had a lot of yellow or a lot of pink, but maybe. <laughs> I should probably also mention that I try, try being the word here, to only keep books that I've given a four or a five star rating to, that I would, books that I would reread. Um, there are some free stars that are still like creeping on the shelves that I should probably get rid of. A couple of them I probably won't because they're the first in a series and I liked the second book or third book or whatever more so, but I'd like to keep the full series. So yeah, I'm now going to attempt to put these in um, some kind of rainbow order. I also might put some this way that have the sprayed edges, you know, because I need more yellow books maybe. So this is... Uh, Skyward, this is a version that G gave me with the yellow sprayed edges. I also have a couple that have like pink sprayed edges. These I haven't read yet. It's Wicked Fox and The Beautiful, but they have like pink sprayed edges. So I might put these on there as well. Um, they should be on the TBR shelves, but I don't feel like I'll be getting to these anytime soon, but I'm not ready to unhaul them. So maybe I'll add these in this way around as well. But yeah, I'm gonna attempt it now. You mean bread and butterflies? Oh yes, of course. It I don't know if I like it. <laughs> it will definitely need to be tweaked, but I fit a good amount of books on here. There are a few down here that I wasn't able to fit, but still, that's a lot of books. I just don't know if I like it. I mean, it kind of works with the wheel, but I'm not great at doing the whole rainbow thing, and it was kind of tricky in some sections, but 
I'm gonna keep it like this for a little bit. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you prefer it before or do you prefer it in this kind of rainbow? Should I maybe do a different kind of rainbow so it goes like from dark to light down here? Let me know. But this was a fun thing to do on Easter Sunday. I don't know guys, I'm just not sure about them yet. I'll get used to them because I'm not gonna change it back right now because I'm tired. And I'm gonna have a sandwich and have a cup of tea and read some more of Steelheart. Like I said, I was listening to the audiobook whilst I was doing the shelves. So I'm now on chapter 26, so I've listened to about three more chapters. I have a new theory, but I don't want to tell you what that theory is in case it's correct. But I just needed to document the fact that I have a theory. But anyway, I'm gonna go mess around with these probably some more this evening and I'll give you an update tomorrow on how they're looking. I'm also gonna finish Steelheart hopefully and then I think I'm gonna pick up Air of Fire because there's certain books I'm saving for next week for the Reading Rush weekend so I think this one or Battle Royale will be the best shot next but I feel like I'm in the mood for this so yeah I will update you when there's things to to talk to you about etc. <laughs> Sorry I'm making you wait for your dinner aren't I? I know what dogs feel like when they get told to sit. <laughs> <laughs> cool cats and kittens. I was supposed to finish out this vlog yesterday because it was Monday but I was having a bit of a crappy day. Um, I wasn't at work though with it being a bank holiday so that was good. So we had a lovely dinner, we ate our weight in chocolate. So today's Tuesday, I've just finished work. It's been a day because obviously it's busier after the uh, Easter holiday, the Easter weekend. But to help get me through, Massey and I demolished a huge Lynn Easter egg so it's not been that bad of a day really. I've been playing around with the shelves a little bit more but then I kind of gave up because I don't think I like it and I feel like I'm probably gonna go back to the way it was or something similar. I just don't really like the warmer toned books like the red, orange and yellow. If I maybe remove those I could still keep it kind of rainbow but just cool tones and I kind of want to put more ornaments and like fake plants and stuff up there. I could remove some of the books but then I feel like it won't be as effective. I don't know. I will probably change it up in next week's vlog depending on your uh, feedback and suggestions. Do let me know your thoughts, that would be much appreciated. Should I have some facing out? Like, I don't know, I'm really indecisive as a person. <laughs> but reading wise, I finished Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson and I was kind of disappointed. The saving grace for me was the ending because he always slays those endings but I really like the world as well, it does feel very uh, apocalyptic. But I just didn't care for these characters when they were in danger, I just wasn't that bothered, I wasn't attached, it was very action packed, more action scenes than anything else, I got a little bit bored during some of them. And I did guess some of the plot points, but the ending though, the ending though, there are little intricacies that he's uh, plotted out in here that I want to continue on the series just for that, like the certain things we're finding out about the epics and how they got superpowers that I need to know more so I probably will continue on in the series but I'm not really in a rush to which is surprising because you all know how much I love Sanderson. I also thought for some reason that this book was published a lot earlier than his others and it wasn't. So I don't know man, let me know your thoughts if you've read the series, do you think it's worth continuing with? I settled on a free star and actually I probably put it up like 0.5 of a star. Um, just for the ending alone. It was okay, but I was expecting to love it so much more because superheroes and Sanderson. The concept is so cool, it was just the execution of this that let it down for me. I just wish it had more of a balance between getting to know your characters as well as the action-packed plot because I wasn't all that invested and also slang. Yeah, a lot of fantasy and sci-fi have their own slang terms, but it does start to grate on you when it's overused, and this was one of those cases. So I probably went into this one with too high of an expectation, but it was fast-paced. I'm not mad that I read it. It was an okay freestyle book for me. 
and it worked for one of the owls prompts so yay i also tried to read era fire yesterday but i just wasn't feeling it i only got a couple of chapters in met rowan though which i didn't expect to happen so quickly i was expecting to meet him in this book i'm also expecting to meet manon which i'm excited about but there seems to be two camps of people they're the people that really love rowan and the people that really hate rowan so excited to see which side of the fence i'll fall on also a huge thank you to those of you who left me links to like recap websites on my wheel of tbr video so that i could recap what happened in the first couple of books because i remember nothing <laughs> apart from the big twist at the end of the second book i remembered that probably because i'm aware of the fandom more so <laughs> saying that this did do a good job of kind of slightly recapping you in the first couple of chapters at least i know what the current mission is anyway but yeah no not really any thoughts yet because i'm only two chapters in i don't know if i'm gonna like it yet but i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it for divination which was to read a book that was picked out for you by a random number generator it also was well it came up for number on my wheel of tbr spins so I'll be reading this one in next week's vlog. <laughs> I am still a little bit dubious because I didn't really enjoy the first two books, but so many people have been yelling at me about how this series gets better from here. So I'm hoping I will enjoy this book. Also, a few people also told me that this book handles depression really well. So I'm intrigued to see how that's done. So should be a fun time. <laughs> so wrapping up my week of reading for the second week of the Owl's Magical Readathon. Firstly, I finished my dad Vanessa, five stars, loved it, so good, highly recommend, read this for Arithmancy. I then read The Sandman by Neil Gaiman, really enjoyed this one as well, gave it four stars. It was a low four though because I'm still not completely sold but I will be continuing on in the series definitely and I read this for Astronomy. And then Steelheart which I just talked about, this was a low three star actually um, but this one I read for the ancient runes heart rune yeah that's the one and then I'm reading this one so it's been a successful week happy to have finally made some progress with this readathon last year I managed to read a book for every single prompt all 12 I would like to do that again this this year but uh, I don't know so next weekend's actually the reading rush like the weekend reading rush it's over four days so that's exciting hoping to get a lot of reading done then I don't know if it'll be a set its own separate vlog or not not we shall see but i will definitely be carrying on with a good girl's guide to murder for our buddy read over on discord this week as well so that will be in next week's vlog excited to discuss this with everybody i'm already halfway in so i have already given first thoughts on it but with it being a mystery thriller it all comes down to that ending and i'm excited to theorize with everybody so that's this week's vlog i hope you enjoyed it i hope everyone's having a lovely week and staying safe and healthy let's chat in the comments about anything you want to chat about if you want to chat to me about the books that i read this week or books that i will be reading or actually let me know how you're doing if you're participating in the owls how many books have you read how many exams have you completed so i'm gonna stop talking so i can get this video edited and uploaded for y'all i hope everybody's doing all kinds of fabulous please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you in the next one my dudes bye y'all <laughs>